So I'm going to quickly record myself in Audacity, and then I'll import these clips into Soundation and Logic to show you how to add effects in these programs. I'll also show you how to add effects in Audacity, but the automation in Audacity is a bit limited. You can add effects, but you can't change their parameters over time. I'm going to press pause and record and make sure my audio levels are still all right. And now I'm going to record myself. Change pitch, change volume, change place, change space, change timbre. I press pause to end my recording and stop so that I can begin editing. Now I'm going to cut each phrase so it's easy to export. I select the phrase, leaving as much room as possible around my speech, and copy and paste it into a new file. Now I'll fade in the beginning of the sample and fade out the end of the sample to prevent clicks when the clip is played. I select the area before the speech and go to the Effect menu and select Fade In. Then I select the area after the speech and go to the Effect menu and select Fade Out. Change Pitch. Then I export the file as a wave. Then I close this file, I don't save the Audacity project, and I move on to the next phrase. Change volume. I copy. I create a new file. And I paste. Change volume. Let's say I decided I spoke a little too quickly and I wanted to insert some space between the words change and volume. I can position my cursor between the two words, go to the generate menu and select silence. Let's generate 0.5 seconds of silence. Change vo volume. Oops, I missed the start of the V. And I'm also creating clicks. Can you hear them? Change vo volume. Basically, the speaker goes from a zero position and has to snap to practically a 0.8. And this creates a click. So I missed the start of the V. I'll just select it and paste it in. volume. Do you hear the clicks in volume? You can also see that the waveform is jumping around. There's also a subtle one at the end of change. Change volume. I'll undo what I just did. Instead, I need to fade out change and fade in volume. I can select edit undo, or just use Command Z. So I'm going to generate 0.5 seconds of silence between change and volume. I'm going to fade out change. And fade in volume. change volume. Notice I still have a little piece of volume left. The V of volume is still attached to change. If I just delete it, I might get a click. Change. It's much better practice to any time you make an edit, fade in or fade out. Change volume. 
This is the kind of editing I often do in Audacity. Before we go on, you should take an in-video quiz. Welcome back. Now I'm going to go on to using effects in Audacity. If you want to move on to the Logic or Soundation videos at this point, feel free to do so. I'll be using the samples I just recorded in those programs. So far on Audacity, I've changed the volume using Fade In and Fade Out, but Audacity can actually automate volume changes. I'm going to close this window and go to my original recording. I'm not going to save these changes because it wasn't a terribly good edit. To automate volume changes, you need to change your cursor to the Envelope tool, and then click on the outer edges of the track to adjust. Moving in towards the middle of the track decreases the volume, but there's no way to increase the volume past 1 and negative 1 using this tool. To increase the volume of a selected area, you need to use the Amplify effect. Go back to the Selection tool and select the area you wish to amplify. Under the Effect menu, pick Amplify. The Amplify effect automatically calculates how much amplitude is needed to reach 0 dB relative to full scale. Basically, 0 dB in audio programs maps to 1 and negative 1. It's a little confusing because 0 dB in the real world is super soft, but in audio it's the loudest possible signal without clipping. Press OK. You can see that the waveform got larger on the vertical dimension. Listen carefully after you use Amplify, because amplification can cause clicking. Change timbre. This one was fine. So we've covered two ways of changing volume in Audacity. The third way is to change the volume on a whole track. Again, be careful when moving towards the right because you're amplifying the sound and it can clip. Change timbre. Change timbre. So far we've used the effect menu to fade in and out and amplify the signal. Other useful effects are also in this menu. Change pitch, change speed, and sliding time scale slash pitch shift all let you change pitch. Select the area you want to manipulate. Change pitch. Choose your effect and play with the numbers. Change pitch and change speed allow you to preview your sound while the sliding time scale does not. If an effect doesn't have a preview, just try the effect. If you don't like it, undo it by going to the Edit menu and select Undo. And then try using the same effect with a different set of numbers. Change pitch. Audacity lets you change the panning for a particular track, but you can't automate this. To get sounds from two locations in Audacity, you actually need two tracks. I can add an audio track by going to Tracks, Add New, and cut and copy a segment of my sound into the new track. Change Place. Then in the track area, I can move my panning to the left or right. And maybe I'll move the other track to the right. Now when I play, you'll be hearing sound first in the right channel and then in the left. Change volume, change place, change space. Audacity also lets you add reverb to any segment of the sound. Again, select the area that you want to affect, go to the effect menu, and select reverb. Play change space. You can preview your reverb. Change space. And remember that the wet 
is the reverberated signal, while the dry is the original. Play change space. Notice that the end of the reverb cuts off. When adding reverb in Audacity, you need to make sure to select well beyond the end of the portion of the sound you want to add the effect to. So I'm going to undo and select more signal after my speech. Then I'll fade it out. Then I'll fade it out. Play change space. Change. Notice how much more natural that sounds. Finally, we'll change timbre by using equalization or EQ. I select the portion of sound I want to affect, go to the effect menu and select equalization. I can select the walkie-talkie curve, which will cut out all sounds below 100 hertz and all sounds above 2000 hertz. And I can preview the result. Change timbre. Or I can draw my own curve. Now I'm boosting the sound at 400 hertz. Change timbre. You have to be really careful when boosting an EQ because it's very easy to clip at particular frequencies. Instead, I'll reduce the frequencies. Change Notice the noise at the end of the track. I've changed the EQ settings in this area, and so the noise becomes much more prominent. It's easy to just select it, delete it, and again, make sure you fade out. Now you have all the skills to create your second audio assignment in Audacity. Try to make something which works on an aesthetic level. You won't be graded on it, but your peers will be asked to give you qualitative comments on the success of your aesthetic vision.